Good morning. I wonder how many of you have already uh, eaten some chocolate this morning. It's uh, maybe you've got the willpower to know that you've got a lovely chocolatey treat still to come and you're waiting. So why are we having treats today? Yes, of course, you all know it's because it's Easter. The Easter period began with, do you remember Shrove Tuesday? You might remember it better as Pancake Day. And traditionally that started Lent, when people either gave something up uh, for, for the 40 days before Easter, to help them concentrate on God instead of thinking about what they were going to eat and the clothes they were going to wear. And lots of people today still give something up and quite often what they choose to give up is chocolate. But some people decide to do something extra and you might have done that. As our church family, we've been doing the journey through Lent and uh, we've been asked to, to read three chapters of the Gospels each day and someone's been explaining their meaning. And that's how we've chose to journey uh, chosen to journey through Lent together. Now, a couple of days ago, we had Good Friday, and you might have thought, well, that's a funny name to call the day when we remember when Jesus died on the cross. But of course, we call it Good Friday because we're looking back from hindsight of Easter Day and what we know happened and that we remember today. But why do we celebrate with eggs? Well, some people say, it's because of the shape of the egg and that maybe people it made people think of the stone that was in front of the tomb where Jesus's body was laid. And uh, it used to be a tradition of people decorating, hard boiling eggs, decorating them. And then uh, with other people in their village, they'd go to the nearby slope or hill and they'd roll their eggs down uh, to, to remember when the tomb, uh, the empty tomb was found because the stone was rolled away. Some people think it's also because chickens hatch out of eggs, so it's a sign of new life. And for the same reason, we sometimes uh, see uh, a little bit of spring um, and the celebration of new life as flowers grow and we see daffodils and people sometimes give people's bunches of flowers at Easter. Um, today we've come to use uh, chocolate eggs and uh, chocolate eggs is, are lovely, but I don't know why we have chocolate rabbits, really. I don't know where they got in the picture. And uh, chocolate dinosaurs, chocolate unicorns, but it is a celebration, isn't it? And that's what we're remembering. If you know why we have chocolate rabbits, you come and tell me at some point. Now, what I want you to do today is think about things that are possible and impossible. I'm going to make some statements and I want you to think. And if you think they're possible, what I say, then um, because I can't see you and because I don't know what your decision is, uh, maybe be a bit responsible to the people who are in the room with you watching this, if there's anyone there, and, and make, some, um, make some sign of what your decision is. So maybe if you think it's possible, you go, yay! If you think it's impossible, you can fold your hands and frown. And if you're really not sure, you can just go ah in the middle. So possible, impossible, not sure. Here's the first one. Because we've been talking about eggs, do you think it's possible for a person with no tricks and no glue to hold more than 20 hen's eggs in their hand, just one hand? If you think it's possible, hands up. If you think it's impossible, arms folded. If you think maybe, hands here. Well, according to the Guinness Book of Records, now I have to admit I've only got the 2016 version, so somebody might have broken this record. The record for the most eggs held in one person's hand is 27 eggs. And these are the rules. You have 30 seconds. Here it comes. My 30 seconds has started and you have to lift your eggs with one hand, place them into your other hand. If you drop any or anything happens to these eggs before the 30 seconds is up, your go is not counted. You could hard boil your eggs and I suggest that might be a good idea. I'm struggling already and I've only got five here. Now when the 30 seconds is up, you, oh, my 30 seconds is up. So how we managed to do 27 in that time, 
I do not know. When the 30 seconds was up, you then have to hold them for another 10 seconds to prove that it's really, um, they're really all in place. So that, it sounded impossible, but it was actually possible. Now, I have to say, I have to own up that when I was getting the eggs out of the cupboard, I even managed to smash two, just lifting them onto the table. So I'm probably not the best person to do that challenge. You might uh, manage it better, but if you're gonna have a go, check it out with your mum and dad first, because it could lead to scrambled eggs all week. Now, a next statement. Can a fish live out of water? I don't mean just survive, um, most fish can survive for a short time, but can it live uh, out of water? Possible? Impossible? Don't know. Well, I would say impossible. I wonder what you decided. Can a person get younger instead of older? Some of us hit a certain age and maybe wish we could, but is it really possible? Is it impossible? Or don't you know? Well, again, I would say impossible. Can a person make one million pounds starting with only one pound? Well, if you can think of a way without robbing a bank or doing anything illegal, you let me know. But I can't think of a way. But I think it possibly could happen. I'm not saying it would be absolutely impossible. Those people who started, um, came up with computer schemes, working in their garage at first, I wonder how much money they had to start off their great inventions with. Last one. Can a person turn their head round, all the way round, 360 degrees? Is it possible? Is it impossible? Or don't you know? Well, I would say, it's impossible. If you can do it, I'd love to see it. Now, can a person who we know for sure has really died come back to life again? Jesus' disciples certainly didn't think so. After Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and placed in the tomb, they were very sad. They even were so frightened that they locked themselves in a room together thinking if they've come and they've taken and arrested Jesus and put him to death, what might happen to us? Because we're known to be his followers. So they were very sad. Um, and three days after he, was, he died and his body had been put in the tomb, the women decided that they would go to the, to the tomb and they would prepare Jesus' body for burial. They had all decided that coming back to life was impossible. And I'm reading from Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the, the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down there with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. And that truth that they found out that day, that Jesus is alive, is the real reason we celebrate Easter. Not the chocolate eggs, nice as they are, but because, uh, not hot cross buns even, not even the holidays from school, not even time with families, but because Jesus loves us. He's powerful, he's the God of the impossible, and he has a wonderful plan for our lives. Let's pray. Jesus. Thank you for the good news of Easter. Thank you that you died and rose again so that we could be forgiven and know how much you love us. Help us to believe and trust that you love us more than we could ever imagine. Help us to tell other people about your love. Amen.